Morning everyone, welcome to today's webinar. The National Disability Service, or NDS, the network of Council of Social Services through ACOS and Jobs Australia, are working in collaboration to implement the National Sex Education and Information Program on behalf of the Commonwealth Government. The focus of the program is to provide factual information about the move to the SCADS Modern Award and the outcome from the Equal Remuneration Order. This video focuses on the implementation of the Equal Remuneration Order and it's aimed at Northern Territory, South Australia, Tasmania and the ACT. The content of the program has been developed by NDS, the Network of Causes and Jobs Australia and our aim is to meet the needs of employers who have employees under the SACS Modern Award. We're also working in collaboration with the ASU who are rolling out a program which focuses on the need of employees employed under the SACS, SACS Modern Award. So to get started today, as I said, we're going to discuss the ERO implementation. Today we'll be looking at the Fair Work System, the transition to the Modern SCADS Award, classifications and the equal pay case and the implications that will have around the country. In terms of paying conditions under the Fair Work System, the NES forms the basis for all terms and conditions of employment for all employees around the country. Sitting above that is the Modern Award and obviously our Modern Award is the SCADS Modern Award. The Equal Remuneration Order applies to uh, classifications within that SCADS Modern Award and we'll get to that in a second. And obviously over that you have EBA's uh, collective agreements and over award payments. In terms of transitional arrangements in moving from your old award to the SCADS Modern Award, there's a couple of things that have happened this year. The first one being classifications. So if you had staff classified under uh, SACS or crisis accommodations, you had to move to the SCADS classifications from the 1st of July this year. If you had staff engaged under home care and family daycare, they were actually to move from the 1st of February this year. And we should note here that uh, these classifications of employees are excluded from the, modern award, uh, sorry, from the Equal Remuneration Order. In terms of wages, if you're sitting in the SACS classifications, the modern award rates apply from the 1st of July. However, if your current award rate is higher, you need to ensure that you maintain that. Also this year on the 1st of July was a 2.9% national wage increase and that was applied, as I said, from the 1st of July. Same for home care and family daycare. However, we started to phase across to the rates from the 1st of February 2012. In terms of penalty rates and loadings, we need to move from the old, uh, the old award uh, penalty rates and loadings to the SCADS Modern Award and that will happen between July 2012 and July 2014. Uh, home care and family daycare actually started moving in February this year but another phasing was applied in July so both uh, classifications are now sitting under the same amount of penalty and loading phased. In terms of the sex classifications, there's a new classification structure and there has been some significant changes for sex employees in some states, especially in New South Wales and Victoria. But there's been no significant change or only minor changes in areas such as Queensland, of course WA, South Australia, ACT and Northern Territory. Some change for disability workers in some states, uh, especially in Victoria and Tasmania. So in translating employees, as I said, the classifications took effect from the 1st of July for SACS employees and what you need to do is evaluate the core skills and responsibility requirements of the position and not the person. The best way to think of this is if there was no one sitting in that position tomorrow, you need to write a position description that would accurately reflect what it is that you want in that job and assess that against the classification descriptions in the modern award. In terms of translation principles, each position should be considered individually and you should take a practical approach to ensure the position description is accurate and use that as a starting point. So the position description forms your basis. Wage rates, as you can see here, are definitely not, uh, should not be used for translation purposes. We're not matching money, we're matching a position description to a classification level. 
it's possible for two positions at, uh, currently at the same classification to translate to two different levels. And that's really based on sitting down looking at the modern award classifications. If they have different duties, different skill levels and responsibility requirements, that may translate them to different classifications, as I said. It's also possible for two positions currently at different levels to end up at the same level in the modern award. And certainly for those of you who had sex, uh, old sex awards that had less than the current eight in the modern award, there is quite a possibility for some staff to translate either two different or the same levels, depending on, as I said, the, the duties, the skills and the responsibility requirements. Experience and qualification should be considered, um, but again, they don't form the basis. In terms of the equal remuneration order basics, Fair Work Australia announced in February this year the uh, equal remuneration order and how that would work. So the instalments are phased in each December from 2012, so we just had the first instalment apply, and they're phased in, in nine equal instalments over the eight years each December. In terms of the equal remuneration order increases, what we're looking at here is the modern award classification uh, equal remuneration order percentages. So a SCADS level 2 moves by 19% and a SCADS level 8 moves by 41%. Fair Work then found that there was also, a, a, they would apply a 4% loading in lieu of the lack of bargaining within our industry which actually means that the full equal remuneration order is between 23% right down to 45%. The way you, it's calculated that each instalment works, as I say, is one night. It's over eight years, but it's in nine equal instalments. So a SACS Level 2 Modern Award will move by 2.6% and a SACS Level 8 Modern Award will move by 5%. Of course, this will be different depending on what your current rates are. In terms of transitional issues, where the old award rate was higher than the modern award rate, you must maintain the old award rate until the uh, modern award rate catches up to where you are. The higher or transitional rates increase at a slower rate than the modern award rate, but we do arrive at the same equal remuneration order payment into 2020. Where the old award rates were lower than the modern award rate, then you had to have moved to the full modern award rate from the 1st of July 2012. In terms of transitional award rates, before July 2012, if your old rate was less than the modern award rate, as I said, you moved to the modern award rate, and then a 2.9% wage increase was applied to that, and that's reflected in Clause 15 of the modern award. If your old award rate was more than the modern award rate, you maintain the old award rate and of course you absorbed, uh, sorry, you applied the 2.9% national wage increase and that's provided for in Schedule A of the transitional arrangements. If your old award rate was more than the modern award plus you had an over an award component, what you needed to do was to look at what the modern award rate was to the applicable award rate was to ensure that you're at least meeting the award minimum. But where you were paying over that award rate, you can see here you had some choice whether to maintain the overall award payment or whether you could actually absorb that into the modern award. In terms of the equal remuneration order arithmetic, it looks rather complicated. However, what it is, is we've used this, and I'll get to a table in a second which hopefully makes this a bit easier, but a, it, for the purposes of the calculation, is the equal remuneration order or where we'll be in 2020. And B, will be the applicable award rate. It, this is where you are now. So that'll either be the modern award or, as I said, you preserve transitional award payments. So your old SACs or the current modern award rate, whichever one you had to maintain. Each December, as I said, you need to calculate one ninth of the difference between the two. And then what you need to do is add one night each year. I think that's better reflected in this table. And what I'm showing you here is that A, as I said, was the full equal remuneration order on the modern award amount. So you can see this is where we've got to be in 2020. If your B is your current rate, so where you're currently, for example, sitting on one of the old SACS rates and it's higher than the current modern award rate, 
you still need to get to difference and what you do is you divide that by one ninth so you can see it's nine equal instalments so this is how we move in line with the modern award if you look at the last column here, B represents the current preserved above modern award rate. So that would be your old SACS rate, or it might in fact be an EBA rate or just an over award payment. You can see again, we still need to arrive at the same modern award amount in 2020. And we do that using the same formula in nine equal instalments. The only difference is, and you can see quite clearly, that the nine equal instalments are at a slower rate. Some examples of transitional rates. So I've used New South Wales as an example here only because it quite clearly sets out that two things that were happening was the move to the classifications and then the application of the equal remuneration order. From here, it's possible just to show you that a New South Wales level under the old SACS New South Wales 2.1 and a 3.1, as we said, two people from different classifications can translate to the same modern award level. So these people we've applied um, a transitional um, to a classification three in the modern award. Now someone who was in New South Wales 2.1 um, prior to June 2012 would have been on $718.40 and a 3.1 would have been $825.70. Of course the SACS modern award rate at the same time was $748.80. Then of course calculating the full equal remuneration order, so adding the full applicable percentage this is showing you that once you apply um, the 23% to the full modern award rate or the applicable rate, um, it would move the award. So if we were sitting in 2020, it would be $943.50. So because that's what we need to get to in 2020, that's what we use as the base. Then of course along came the national minimum wage increase in July this year, and that was, as I said, 2.9%. Now what we need to do is add the 2.9% to each of the rates because the 2.9% did apply to both your old award and the modern award. Then we need to redo the calculation against the modern award showing well if their base was $770.50 and we applied the same percentage in terms of the equal remuneration order, it would actually move that to $970.80. Then you need to calculate the difference between where they are currently, where they would be in 2020, calculate that difference and divide it by the one ninth. So what we're showing you here is that the applicable rate for the modern award movement would be a 2.9% increase from the 1st of December in line with the equal remuneration order. However, what you can see here is someone who translated from a New South Wales 3 over to the modern award 3 the New South Wales rates were much higher. So the same maths applies. The only difference here is that the rate that that person's currently on is $863.10. So we need to calculate the difference between the modern award rate, which is the $970.80 and the $863.10. We divide that by one night to get our nine equal installments. And you can see while the modern award is moving by 2.9%, someone who was a New South Wales um, classification 3.1 that moved to a 3 is only going to get 1.6% of that equal remuneration order. As I said, they are moving towards the same rate in 2020, it's just that the modern award rate moves much faster. What the first column is shows, the first line sorry is showing you is that New South Wales 2.1 was was being paid $780.40, but actually the modern award rate was higher. So this person had to move to the modern award rate from the 1st of July this year and then they will get increases in line with the applicable modern award rates. So just to set that out in a table which I think makes it a little bit clearer, the bottom line you can see on the screen, the darker one, is the modern award rate. You can see that that moves at quite a high rate between now and 2020 and that's because the full equal remuneration order is applying to that. If you can picture using this as the New South Wales example, and we have had to use um, a national minimum wage increase each year, um, and we've based that on an assumption of 3%. We don't guarantee that, it, there's no guarantee that is what it will be, um, but we needed to do that for the purpose of showing you how this would work. So the both rates will move each uh, December by the equal remuneration order, and then again in July each year, 
in line with the national minimum wage increase. And you can see that someone who's translating from the New South Wales awards are currently higher than the modern award and they just move at a slower rate. And you can see that's reflected by the gradient here. If there's any further information that you need or links to other websites, you can refer to the NDS website and that's printed now on your screen. I'd like to thank you all for attending today. Thank you very much.